Hi guys, thank you for joining me. Um, I have a very, very special treat for you today. Um, I know I told you when I was showing you my tarot gifts that I got over the holiday season, I mentioned that I was waiting on a very special deck that I'd ordered by an artist I really, really admire and love. And it came yesterday in the mail and I wanna show it to you. So here it is, here is the big reveal. This is the Baphomet Tarot of the One of the Underworld by H.R. Giger. Uh, now, for those of you who don't know, H.R. Giger uh, was the guy who created the alien monster in the Alien movie. He's he's the guy who designed the monster and created it. I mean, he was just an incredible, incredible artist. He passed away last year, I believe. Uh, but anyway, this is it. I got it off a seller on eBay. And it's Major Arcana only, which is um, comes with 23 cards, this deck, and I will show it to you. It also comes with an amazing guidebook. Um, very, very thick guidebook, like so, with the cover of the cards, and it's very, 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 very um, meaty, okay? Now, these cards I realize are not for everyone. They are very, very dark. Some people say they find these cards very, very disturbing, but I think they are absolutely beautiful and I love them. I've been a fan of H.R. Giger ever since I saw that first Alien movie and found out who he was and um, looked up his other art. I mean, he was a genius. He really was. Um, I think there's, let me see if I can find you. There's a picture of him in here. Um, let's see if I can find a better one. There's one there, but I thought there was another one. Just a memento, sorry. Now these cards are also, I mean, they're definitely not Rider weight clones. Uh, he definitely put his own spin on the tarot uh, in this deck. And um, I mean, very, very loosely, I guess, followed, um, you know, the tarot. Well, I shouldn't say loosely. I, he put his own spin on it, okay? All right, here's a picture of him. H.R. Giger is the guy on the right. That was him. And um, this book, I was looking through it yesterday, and there's some really cool stuff in here. I want to read you something. Uh, hope, hopefully I can find it. Well, anyway, here is the... Um, here it says, some introductory words on the new edition of Baphomet and the Creator Virus. Yeah, the extra card in here is called the Virus Card. Anyway, here's what the publisher said. Baphomet is not endearing. He does not approach the spiritual world with a soft angle. Baphomet stirs and shocks. This is because he is mercilessly honest with his opinion on human nature. He leads us to unknown depths of our inner being, visions that reach far beneath our skin. And that was in 1992 when the cards were first released. This is a, I guess, it's not a revised edition, but I, I don't know, I guess they republished it. Um, and this was published in, boy, let me see here, 2010, 2010, okay? Uh, but anyway, listen to this, I was reading this. This is from, this came from somebody who had bought the cards. It says, as the deck was in my house, suddenly all tiles fell off the walls. After that, there was a series of strange and dangerous electricity accidents. Slowly but surely, everything went out of order. The climax was the cable fire in the tumble dryer. The smoke rose up through the whole building and blackened all the walls. Gradually, I became aware of the time relation between the streak of bad luck and Giger's tarot. I wrapped the stuff in a blue silk cloth, tied it up, and hastily buried it in the furthest corner of my closet. There were no more accidents, but the house remained cold even in midsummer. It had thin walls and normally should have easily warmed up. Despite many efforts, the house decayed like the Sleeping Beauty's castle. In the garden, only grass and tomatoes thrived, nothing else. I would only touch the Baphomet tarot over my dead body, and I truly dissuade anybody from buying it. <laughs> when I read that, I was like, whoa, holy shit. <laughs> um, no, I don't think these cards are bad luck. I think, um, I think they're amazing, and... Um, they're just incredible. So let me show you the cards. Okay, like I said, these cards are, there are others, there's nudity, there's a lot of sexual imagery in this, um, in this deck. And uh, for those of you who are offended by, you know, 
depictions of sex or sexual imagery and sexual terminology because I'm going to be talking about these cards. Uh, you might want to click off now, but um, I highly recommend you don't because these cards are one of a kind. They are a collector's item. I'm so glad I have them. And um, yeah, I was also really impressed the seller that I got them off on eBay sent me this card with it. It's really well packaged in this. And uh, sent me this really cool card in a cool envelope even. And here it is. <laughs> and then he wrote me a little note inside it saying, enjoy the cards. You know, so I thought that was really cool. That was a nice touch. So anyway, let's get to it. Okay, so here's the fool. It's got a shotgun in his mouth. There's a nude woman uh, riding the shotgun, looks like, or trying to maybe was riding him and is now riding the shotgun. It's just, it's so like... And look at that stairway, that staircase leading up. It's like, it's just so murky. And here's the backs of the cards, by the way. So that is the fool. Here is the magician. I love the, uh, the streams coming out of the magician's eyes here. There's a lot of machinery imagery in H.R. Giger's work. It played a huge role in his art. <clears throat> Lots of like, you know, just metal steel looking contraptions that just are just so amazingly intricate. And um, wow, they're just amazing. Anyway, here's the High Priestess. Wow. Okay, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there is a an erect penis coming off the top of that horned, that horned goat's head or whatever. And of course, she is nude. Oh no, she's not nude, bro. She is, but she's kind of new, neutral looking, I guess. Here's the high priestess. Even these look like penises, like these, these baby heads with the with the long necks. Okay, and the Empress. Fuck, the Empress has a severed head. I mean, you could just look at these, you know, forever and just try to figure out all the stuff that's going on in these cards. You know, you would probably see something different every time. And like I said, they don't correspond to the rider weight, so... And there's not really any descriptions any um, easily discernible descriptions of the cards in the book. Uh, I'll get to that after I show you the cards. This Emperor card is fucking amazing. Look at this. He's a corpse. Two corpses. You know, he's got the uh, the rifle slung over him. It's like you can really sense the, 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 the vibe of how the Emperor came to his power through violence and force and... Um, you know, aggression and, uh, you know, that side of that is depicted in this card. And I think it's done so well. And the fact that he's like, you know, two corpses, like there's a corpse behind him. He's a corpse. It's just fucking amazing. I think pardon my language, but like I said, if you're offended by this kind of stuff, then, uh, click off. Okay. Here is the Hierophant. I hope you guys are seeing these, okay? Uh, here is the lovers. And you can see a very, very formidable uh, <laughs> penis here. And, um, you know, they're entwined. There's, oh, there's just mouths. There's like, there's just so much going on. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Here's the chariot. And here you can see the alien creature. If you guys know the alien movie, which I'm sure most of you do, there he is. There's that creature. Uh, or, or else very reminiscent of that creature. And I think this, this thing here is just amazing. 
this thing that's symbolizing the chariot. Here is strength. And these two are having sex. And there's a there's a skull, a corpse behind them. Not sure what that has to do with strength, but uh, I don't know. Maybe getting your strength from another person. Maybe taking taking your energy from another person. I don't know, but uh, I think it looks just absolutely amazing. Oh, uh, the hermit. I love this hermit. That's pretty. Um, you know, self-explanatory. Looks very alone there, very isolated. Here is the Wheel of Fortune. We've got two nude women here. Two nude women on either side of this spiky contraption. There's another card here that I thought would look much more like the wheel, which is coming up because there is an actual wheel figure in it that looks more like a wheel than this does. But anyway, just uh, here is the justice it's called the justice and it's got uh, looks like some kind of demon or devil holding up a Christ figure that's strung on a, a line or or something. Good and evil, I suppose, you know. Um, it's just so many, so many things come to mind. Here's the hanged, the hanged man is called the hanged witch. And there she is all spread eagled and something is in, going inside her and this reminds me of going for a gyne gynecological exam, actually. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, you sure get the feeling of helplessness in, in this uh, resignation, helplessness, you know, in this card. Uh, here is The Death. This is called The Death again. This is another one that's pretty, that I think follows that Rider Waite vibe very well. You know, not that every tarot deck has to. Not that every tarot deck has to follow Rider Waite, you know? You know, Crowley had his own uh, Thoth system. And, uh, you know, that's also a very, very uh, popular deck and a beautiful deck and an amazing deck. This one is the, it's called, um, Temperance is called the Alchemy in this deck. Yeah, it's got the four elements, says the second celebration of the four. And I love this, this goat here. <laughs> Scary looking goat, man. <clears throat> uh, the devil, here we are. And this nude woman looks like she is being penetrated by something on his head. Here is the tower. <laughs> Here is the star. But this one, this is the one of, I think the only sort of tranquil feeling card in this deck is this one. Cause that, that waterfall is very, is very serene. I think it's very nice and kind of gives off that healing, relaxing vibe, which definitely the rest of this deck does not do. <laughs> uh, here's the moon. This reminds me of some kind of like Indian, Indian God, you know, with the many arms. Uh, 
Uh, this is the sun. And again, you can get that sort of glowy, that glowy feeling from it, from that that glow in the middle of the card. So that's kind of Rider Waite-ish. And here is The Judgment. And last but not least, the world is called the universe. And I think this is really beautiful. That huge, that face with the lips and the, the sunbeams or the light coming down. I think it's really beautiful. <coughs> Excuse me. And again, like I said, there's an extra card called the virus. And it looks like sort of uh, an extension of the devil card. It's the same, the same image, only more a bigger view of it, more detailed view of it, I guess. So there you go. There is the HR Giger Tarot. I know it's not for everybody. Not everybody is going to like it. But I don't care because I like it. <laughs> I love it. As a matter of fact, I think it's amazing. I think it's an amazing work of art and um, just a huge achievement. Um, and let me see if I can find that part where it says uh, Giger was talking about how he he designed this deck not following. Just one second. I'll see if I can find it. Okay, so like I said, this is a really great little guidebook, and I just found a uh, description here of how um, they explain the tarot, and I thought it was really great, so I'll just read it to you. It says, Let us imagine tarot as a door behind which another panorama lies each time we shuffle and lay out the cards. The cards represent their own particular universe, a miniature model of all sequences of events in the world, and supply us with the pattern to a reality which we then interpret from our own personal point of view. At any moment in time, world and people are weaving a complex fabric of cause and effect. But because the world is not as simple as it seems, and because it becomes what it is, that is to say, only through our imagination, we can consider reality as a complex network which only materializes as a result of the interplay of all of its components, including human understanding. So, yeah, kind of tells you how the tarot works the concept behind it, how the tarot, all the major arcana represent different themes that everybody goes through and it's random and and there's cause and effect and you know there's all these things going into it. And then um, he, I found the part where uh, Giger was talking about how he designed this tarot and um, he said, I painted the pictures without thinking of a tarot deck except maybe for the number 15, which is the devil. So I can't say whether I would have painted it differently. Akron, that's the publisher of this deck, chose the pictures and I was always in agreement. So I guess they actually told him what they wanted or gave him an idea and he went and did the paintings. And um, yeah, so I just adore, adore, adore this deck. Um, I paid, how much was it? I think it was either 50 or 60 bucks on eBay, uh, but I've seen it for like as much as two three hundred or whatever but there's a bigger version of it with a poster I got just the the kind of regular size cards um, and I'm happy with those very happy with those so anyway um, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at my at my new deck this is gonna take a a very very um, exalted position in my tarot collection and uh, I'm so glad that I have it you know I just love it love it love it okay I'll see you guys soon bye for now